Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm uh, fortunate enough to be here today to share with you some insights from what we're really seeing and hearing in the market. So AI business, we're focused on the true business impact of artificial intelligence. This hot topic that people are talking about, what does it mean? But what does it mean for enterprise? So we're looking at the practical applications. Hollywood, however, would probably more rather you think of AI as machines sent from the future, set to extinct the human race, or potentially machines set to trick us into thinking they're humans and then overcoming us with their overarching intellect. Perhaps then an army of robots. How about that as a scary thought? I, however, would rather think of AI software as something we could fall in love with. But as I say, Hollywood is one thing, the real world is another. So we're looking at the business opportunity. What does it mean for enterprise? How can businesses, from financial services to healthcare institutions to legal, how can you really leverage the power artificial intelligence offers? What solutions are coming to the market, and how can you use these? So it's everything from automating clerical tasks, the mundane, the easy, the automatable. So contact centers, we're getting more complex now with customer-facing applications, business to consumer, business to business. How can you use AI, natural language processing, to really automate a lot of these, reduce costs, increase efficiencies, and have a better overall experience? Processing vast amounts of data, you know, this is not new, but actually automating this and being more predictive with the analytics that are coming out of it. Formulating reports, you know, this is another key area that can be automated and done in a much more efficient way. Even then through to IT and, and monitoring network performance. So automating a lot of this without the need for human interaction, both on detecting faults but also resolving. And again, preventing cyber attacks. I was talking to a gentleman earlier on today about the huge opportunity this has and how AI can really enhance that as a process. An interesting statistic here, now this is something that Clint will lead on from, uh, from my session, but actually current investment in AI from the enterprise sits at $357 million. This is a large amount of money, but nowhere near where we could be for the full potential. We can look at more complex tasks, so really enhancing that human and machine relationship. Thinking of this as a collaborative process and not the fear factor that the mainstream media would have us believe of actually we're all going to lose our jobs to Terminator. So predicting human behavior, enhancing decision making. How can we look at this for improving the customer experience, their journey with us? Increasing revenues. So speeding up time to market, this is another key area that AI can really help us when we're looking at new opportunities and new revenue streams. And here we have a more interesting statistic, $31 billion is a predicted worldwide enterprise investment in AI technologies and solutions by 2025. That is a huge, huge increase. So where are we today? What's the current state of play? And why is everyone talking about AI? It's not new. It's been around for 50, 60, 70 years. But why now are we talking about AI? Why are people getting excited again? Well, we have the data, exponentially growing year on year. And we also have the processing power, which we've not had before. So this puts us in an almost big bang moment for the advancement of AI. And this is why we at AI Business are so excited by the opportunity the market is, is unfolding. So we're looking now at current implementation rates. Who is using the technology? So from our surveys and feedback we're getting from the market, 20 to 35% of businesses today are looking at actually building in these solutions. They're using the technology. So we're really at the start of this curve. When we researched a number of CIOs and CTOs from FTSE 100 and Fortune 500 scale organizations, we found 32% are already implementing some form of AI. 
So it shows there is activity, there is interest, there is buy-in to this. But again, we're really at the start of this curve. More interestingly, those that aren't implementing today, 82% of them are planning to do so within 12 to 18 months. It's on their radar, it's on their map, which means now is the opportunity to be realizing how we can help. What are the technologies? What are the products? What are the markets that can most benefit from using AI? So from the current uptake, that 32%, we see 75% of them are investing in machine learning and deep learning applications. We see this as one of the leading technologies. Natural language processing, NLP, 45% of the market. Image recognition, 15%. Which sectors? So I mentioned a few earlier, but yeah, financial services really, I think, are leading the way. That are open to disruption and disruptive technologies. And this is one of the, the key kind of use cases we're seeing more and more for businesses, RBS, HSBC, JP Morgan, who are actually implementing now already. But which ahead? Where is the future opportunity? I think healthcare, from what we're seeing, is probably the biggest. Telco and legal are soon to follow. But we also see a lot of applications looming in manufacturing and retail. So investment, we've talked about investment from the enterprise, but what about investment from venture capital, corporate? It's big and it's growing. 700% increase over the past five years. You've now got funds that are setting up specific divisions, recruiting specific people with expertise in data science, machine learning, AI, into the organizations because they need that real world understanding of how the technology works for where they're making their investments. Over a 1,000 deals have been done with the startup community, startups focused on AI technologies. So now the opportunity is very hot. 65% of these investments, I guess quite obviously, are made at seed or series A, so early stage businesses. And we see corporate investors are currently obviously overshadowing the VC community with more than a billion dollars invested. So who are the top investors from the corporate side? So this was done by CB Insights. You've got Intel Capital leading the way, Google Ventures, GE Ventures, some of the investments, notable companies here. Some actually, I believe, are in the room today. But this is a really interesting chart that shows just how seriously the big corporate investors are taking this. So this is a heat map showing where investment is going into these early stage businesses. What technologies within this narrow AI field are they focusing on? Which sectors, which verticals are they looking at? So healthcare is leading the way. Advertising, sales and marketing, business intelligence, all very focused narrow applications of the technology. M&A, another really hot area. So you have the investment coming in, but then you obviously have the big businesses looking to acquire the expertise. Obviously, a lot of this has been in the press, but you've got huge investments being made day in, day out by Apple, Microsoft, IBM, Twitter, Intel have made a number of big acquisitions recently and are now coming to the market with their overall AI strategy. Something we've not yet seen. The past two years, a lot of these big organizations have been very muted on what they see as the opportunity around AI. However, end of 2016 and into this year, we're now seeing a lot more activity from the big players, the big technology giants. A lot of that has been fueled by the businesses that they're acquiring. So what are the CIOs saying? We say we talk to the market, so what are they saying? Well, we surveyed 100 CIOs from across Europe and UK's leading Fortune 500 scale businesses. 
And so what we found is AI is actually at the top of their agenda when they're looking at technology for investment over the next three to five years. It's there, it's on the radar. They need to be thinking about it. It's in the strategy, but the strategy is nowhere near defined. Current spending, so those who are investing, that 32%, they're averaging around 100 to $200,000 for their investments, for their pilot projects. So we're starting small, as you would, but we're looking at scaling that up. So this is looking to increase to over a million over the next three years. Once they see and realize that potential, more and more investment will obviously follow and in a very short time frame. Their current focus for where to use it and how to use the technologies. So improving efficiencies, reducing costs, improving creativity within the business. I think this is one really important point. AI is not just about the clerical, the automation. It's about how can you free people to go on and produce more creative applications, more creative roles and responsibilities. We've talked about the technologies, but again, hottest that the, that the CIOs are coming to us with is machine learning, image recognition, natural language processing, RPA, robotic process automation. Customer service, this is ranking as the top area of the business where they see the biggest opportunity. I think this is kind of closely followed by sales and marketing and a more broader spectrum of applications. But it's all about that outward-facing approach. What are their fears? What are the concerns? Unemployment, data privacy, these are probably the most pertinent issues that CIOs are raising. They're looking at the holistic approach for the business. How does it affect the overall organization? So unemployment is one of the main areas of concern, I think, for, for most people when you think about AI. So how do you tackle that? How do you build advocates into the business? How do you think about new roles that are created? Rather than job displacement and job loss, but it's more roles are created. How can we work with the technology in this collaborative approach? Decision making. So we're seeing it still sitting, CIO, CTO, heads of analytics and data, but it's broadening. We're seeing more roles created day in, day out. More specific applications, so more specific expertise is required. Some of the key industry applications. So I've talked about the key sectors, financial services, anything from customer care to fraud prevention, detection, algorithmic trading, there's many, many ways that this can be used in financial services. Pharmaceuticals. So Pfizer, they partnered with IBM Watson, um, and they used their cognitive platform to search for new cancer treatments and accelerate the identification of new treatments and therapies. So there's active investment from the pharmaceuticals companies in using this technology for good and profit. Retail. Again, customer experience is king. So in Bloomingdale's in the US are utilizing AI for advanced analytics so they can create a really, really personalized experience for their customers. How can they map their stores to give you the best experience for when you visit, to maximize your time? Transport, so this is everything from automotive through to fleet trade, Freighting, delivery. Again, this, this sector probably is going to see the biggest transformation. Cars as a service probably will be a thing of the future. And the legal sector. So Deloitte, they believe in the UK alone, over 110,000 jobs will be displaced by 2020. So how do we get started? What do we do if we're a business looking to leverage AI? We need to decide where we start. Where do we begin? It's a bit of a minefield right now. So decide within the organization what units, what roles are you going to focus on? What applications? Is it marketing? Is it your IT and infrastructure? Is it HR? Is it your process management? Really find a specific area, focus on that, and this is where you can look to really understand the benefit, the opportunity. You need to allocate responsibility. 
to a certain department, a certain unit. Someone needs to take the lead with this. We're seeing many project heads fit into the conversation, but really you need to understand a division itself, a unit itself, needs to head this and lead this and take responsibility. As I say, it does feed in many different roles, so ensure the board is involved in the process. So CIO, CTO, but CMO, CEO. There's a conversation now with the CAIO. Plan for the recruitment of new expertise. Nothing new here. Make sure you have the right people in place who are going to deliver the project, but also deliver the future projection for where you need to then take the business once you've delivered it. Choosing the right partner, this is probably one of the more complex processes here because there's so many people to choose from. And again, yeah, I mentioned there's more and more born every minute. In the European landscape alone, we did a survey, there's over 400 startups now focused specifically on AI technologies, and that's growing exponentially. Then bring in Silicon Valley and what's happening here in Asia, and you've got a huge selection of people, partners that you can work with. So really understanding who's the right one for you is really key. Set, as I say, really specific pilot projects, realistic timescales and desired outcomes, and stick to those. Don't get carried away. Think of this as a real long-term investment. So the short term really needs to be focused. So this really is what we need to be doing as end users of the technology, as enterprises, how we can advance practical AI for business. Where can you gain a bit more insight on this? So AI business, as I mentioned, we're a publication. You can sign up for newsletters, insights. You can see all of the articles per sector. So if your interest is financial services, you can see everything related, what applications are out there, what use cases there are today. Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube. There's many outlets that we're pushing content through that you can leverage and understand more about what the real opportunity is for you and how it can apply in your business. And again, so we're part of the AI summits. So we're running events now in Tokyo but also San Francisco, London, New York, Hong Kong, where we bring together our enterprise demographic, the top tier of our readership, those CIOs, those CTOs, to really get an understanding from them of what are they doing, what is their strategy, but give them a forum to find out more as well, answer some of their questions and their concerns. So this is a bit from me. I'm now going to pass over to Clint Wheelock from Tractica. So Clint is heading up our, well, official research partner firm, Tractica, and is going to go into a bit more detail on the, I guess, the, the markets, the focus, the opportunities, the investments as well. Um, so thank you very much, and I'll now pass over to Clint. Well, thank you, Daniel, and thank you to, uh, all, all, to thanks to all of you for joining us today. I'll flip forward on the slides here. And I'd like to expand on a number of the themes that Daniel began talking about, um, but to uh, give you a bit more insight into some of the use cases, uh, some of the key trends that we're watching in the market, in the AI market uh, at Tractica, as well as some quantification of the market opportunity uh, by use case, by industry sector, by technology, and, and so forth. So I'd ask you to fasten your seatbelts because there's a lot of data in this presentation and uh, and I think that we're, but we're going to shift from the kind of data that we uh, have been discussing for most of the day uh, with, with operational data and, and so forth and insights that can be gained from that and start to look a bit more toward the future into uh, some market forecasts that we've prepared at Tractica. So just by way of introduction, Tractica is an industry analyst firm. We do market research and consulting. Uh, focus and the common thread of our research is on uh, human interaction with technology. We have five key areas of sector focus, and these include artificial intelligence, uh, a key part of our, our business, as well as robotics, user interface technologies, wearable devices, and digital health. So in doing all of this, our, our research and analysis, which is both qualitative and quantitative in nature, 
most often serves as an input into the business planning and strategic planning processes of large technology companies, typically on the supply side of the market, but also somewhat among the enterprise end users, including a number of companies here in Japan. So let's start with some key AI market trends and drivers. And actually in partnership with AI Business at the end of last year, at Tractica, we published a white paper that took a look at the 10 key trends in AI to watch in 2017 and beyond. And these are themes that I'll focus on throughout the course of the, uh, the rest of the presentation today, but I wanted to highlight them here quickly because we have a lot of data to get through and, and only a, a short period of time to do it. So the first key one is the idea that AI implementations will continue to be focused primarily on improvements, uh, not replacing entire business processes, but choosing components of business processes for optimization purposes, reducing costs, increasing, uh, improving outcomes, um, and improving efficiencies. But in, so it's very tactical in the short term, but in the long term, the transformative business model effects of AI shouldn't be ignored. We believe we found that virtually all AI implementations will be narrow AI in the foreseeable future, as opposed to strong AI or, or uh, also known as artificial general intelligence. Deep learning among the, the six different key AI technologies we look at at Tractica, uh, we believe will be the most important technology. You'll see some quantification of that in a minute. Semi-supervised AI will gain some traction. Today, most, if not all, AI is supervised in nature. There's human in the loop, and, and there's a, a, an essential element of uh, human intervention. In the intermediate term, semi-supervised AI will gain some traction. We think that, it's, uh, that unsupervised AI is quite a bit in the future in most cases. Uh, from the use case perspective, we believe that a top-heavy and long-tail ecosystem is emerging for AI. We'll illustrate this when we look at the revenue ranking of the use cases. There are a few key use cases at the top. It quickly goes down from there and then a long tail of niche applications in different industry markets. From a hardware perspective, and this is a, a piece of the market that's often ignored because there's so much focus on the data and on the algorithms, but really the entire hardware industry is trying to figure out uh, what the implications of AI will be, including processors. We've tended, the industry has tended to think of uh, AI as being driven by graphics processing units, GPUs, but really increasingly there's a diverse set of processors, including different types of uh, CPUs and ASICs and FPGAs that are, uh, that are going to be increasingly important. As we'll see in a few minutes, AI will impact almost every industry, uh, and, I, and I think uh, Daniel spoke to that very well. Human perception is actually a bigger driver for AI than big data in our estimation. I'll get to this in a minute, but this is the idea that vision and language-based systems are some of the most important ones, uh, especially in the growth of uh, AI use cases in the future. Uh, like hardware, professional services sometimes is an underappreciated area of the, of the, uh, the business, but we find that the implementation of AI-based software systems will drive a significant investment in different types of professional services. We'll talk about that in a minute. And finally, AI czars, or uh, chiefs uh, that cut across multiple governmental departments uh, and focus on public policy in this area will be increasingly important in government by 2020. So, oh, sorry about that. I'll skip through that because our formatting didn't work out. The um, Next portion here really shows you our taxonomy of key AI technologies. I won't spend a lot of time with the definitions, but we find that there are uh, six key technology areas. One is uh, more, more traditional or classical machine learning. Uh, one is deep learning that utilizes uh, deep neural networks and convolutional neural networks, natural language processing, computer vision, machine reasoning, also known as cognitive systems or expert systems, and finally, strong AI. The first four technologies are really the driver of AI revenue growth in enterprise markets in, over the next 10 years or so. We expect, uh, we've, we've been fairly conservative in our forecasting, but we expect very little um, uh, revenue to be generated by machine reasoning and strong AI capabilities. 
And this is just a little bit about our uh, forecast methodology. I won't get into the details, aside from the fact to say that it's a bottom-up methodology that looks at use cases first. We've vetted several hundred uh, potential use cases in our market research work and did primary research through in interviews with industry players, enterprise end users, and basically sorted out which ones we thought were um, real enough in terms of trial deployments or commercialization to be able to size and forecast. We ended up with 191 use cases. These are associated with each of the technology areas and associated with 27 different industry sectors as well and then we derive revenue through various means using various metrics for each of those use cases. So let's talk about some of the industries and use cases. So, and this is the point where we'll accelerate the speed of going through some of this data because I, I, and I, it's not so much to convey the exact data points that are in the slides as it is to show you some of the logic behind it and some of the complexity that's unfolding in this market. So of the 27 different industry sectors, I think the key point here is that this is a highly fragmented business. The AI, as I mentioned before, touches virtually every industry. And it's, uh, it's something that's not gonna be limited to financial services or healthcare um, or transportation or, or uh, consumer markets or defense markets. It's something that's going to affect the fashion industry, advertising, retail, life sciences, and a wide variety of different industries. This shows you where we are today in terms of our estimate of total AI revenue. Um, and we anticipate that just under half of the total market, about 44%, is made up of the consumer and the defense sectors. But if you flip forward to our forecast for 2025, you'll see that it's a much more diverse market. Now, it's not that the consumer and the defense sectors are shrinking. Uh, certainly, there's very strong growth in those markets as well, but this is an increasingly diversifying market where the real strong growth is going to be in those enterprise segments. This shows you the stack chart, the, the, the long tail effect, if you will, of where the revenue comes from, from an from a, 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 a AI industry sector basis. The consumer uh, market is the largest, business followed by business services, advertising, defense, media, and entertainment. And you can see that although there are some smaller uh, uh, industry impacts further down the list, like life sciences, gaming, building automation, and fashion, truly this is something that touches virtually every industry. So for purposes of zooming in a little bit, we'll focus on the top 12. And I just wanted to give you some sense, uh, again, apologies for the formatting, wanted to give you some sense of the um, diversity of use cases. So within each of those top 12 uh, industry sectors, these represent our ranking of the top three, four, five use cases in each of those areas. Again, won't get into the detail, but I will say that there are two trends here. One is that oftentimes a use case is unique to a particular industry. So some of the largest use cases like algorithmic trading or the efficient handling of patient data uh, through electronic me medical records are specific to just one industry. But some capabilities like static image recognition, classification and tagging, self-navigation or collision avoidance systems are things that can span multiple industries. So there are two dynamics that happen when we look at the use case level. I talked before about the distinction between big data and uh, human perception oriented use cases. And we've classified each of our top use cases within these three categories. Big data is the one that people like to talk about and, and oftentimes it's at the uh, early end of the adoption curve, but really in the long term, vision and language-based systems, things that emulate human perception through uh, giving computers better uh, capabilities for human-like perception are gonna be the drivers of growth in the longer term. You can see here, this is just the uh, classification of each of the top 15 use cases in terms of revenue by big data, vision, and language. So moving on to the use case view, you can see also here that this is a top heavy but long tail phenomenon when we look at the revenue opportunity by use cases. And so this is the cumulative revenue that we're forecasting for the next 10 years uh, in our models at Tractica. And it, uh, we have static image recognition, classification and tagging at the top, algorithmic trading, efficient scalable processing of patient data, and then it quickly falls off from there. And as you can imagine, this list would go all the way through the floor if you uh, included all 191 of them. But the, the point is that there's a substantial revenue opportunity 
for a significant number of use cases in the market. From a technology standpoint, this is where we expect to uh, see the market in 2025. Deep learning will be 44% of the total market, but also strong opportunities in those human perception related areas of computer vision and natural language processing. Machine learning for the most part is where we've been in the past from the st standpoint of capabilities, but that's an area that will continue to grow because those types of capabilities, even though they may not be the most sophisticated technology that's being developed in AI today, are highly applicable to a number of different business use cases. So let's look quickly at AI-driven hardware and services. I mentioned before that this, there's a, a downstream effect of, uh, on the hardware and services market, and um, this is a case where uh, the, uh, what, what I've talked about before focuses on the software end of the market, but we anticipate that the hardware revenue opportunity is about four times that, uh, spanning cloud services, CPUs, GPUs, networking products, and storage products, and on the professional services end of things, likewise, about four times the amount of the core software revenue um, is, uh, is, uh, will drive additional professional services from training to installation, customization services, application system integration, support and maintenance. And uh, in this case, as you can see, we anticipate about $150 billion in annual uh, service revenue there. So to wrap things up, a few things for the, that we went back to from the original uh, uh, key trends to watch in 2017 and beyond, and I think you've seen this backed up in a lot of the data. Virtually all impl AI implementations today are narrow AI and most strong AI is still years in the future. AI implementations are driven by three very practical factors, cost reduction, efficiency gains, and accuracy improvements. AI implementations have three primary components, training data and algorithms, I think that's well understood, but human supervision is one of the areas that's often not that well understood. Uh, as I mentioned, um, it, it, keeping, in keeping with the theme of narrow AI, it's not yet changing fundamental business processes, but it is having an effect on, on uh, small pieces of it, and in the long run, it has the potential to open up new business models as well. Deep learning is the key technology to watch. Uh, industries are deploying AI on different hardware and software configurations, and there's still no standard configuration, so that it's very much uh, up for grabs, and it's a time of uncertainty from a hardware vendor standpoint. With commercial acceptance, AI companies are going to require a large supporting business ecosystem, and that professional services category will be an extremely important area. There is always a major risk of AI being oversold. It's not a panacea, but it, can, uh, it, it is best used for very targeted, uh, well-defined applications where the, out, the outcome is very measurable. And then th another important thing, I think, to wrap this up, that it's important to keep in mind is, AI is a relative definition, and we find that oftentimes once a technology is more mature, it's no longer considered AI anymore. So this market is very much a moving target, even from a definitional standpoint. And from there, I'll wrap it up, and we'll see if we've, do we have time for a few questions? No, I think we don't. But Daniel and I will be around uh, for uh, the rest of the afternoon and evening, so we thank you. <laughs>